glasses on or off? I think off. And lens, oh, damn it. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you have been here before, unlikely though. So welcome to my channel. My name is Julie. This is Frame Ambition and today I'm going to tell you five steps to making your own comp card or Z card. So I assume you want to be a model, huh? Or you're at least curious or you're kind of getting into it but not really sure where it's going. Well, modeling and the world of fashion, beauty and branding is a business and just like in any other business, you need a business card for you to be easily contactable for you to make a good first impression. So a model's business card is called a Z card or a composite card, sometimes shortened to comp card. So I'm gonna break down one, what a Z card is, what it looks like, what it's for, just like what. Number two, uh, how to choose or take the pictures that you need to go on it. Number three, the layout. Number four, what apps and programs you can use to make it. Finally, number five, now that you have it, what do you use it for? Like, what on earth is it for? Okay, so number one, what is a Z card? Well, basically, as I described it, it is um, a little bit like a model's business card. It is a double-sided card. Of, it's 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches. That's around the size of it. And basically, it contains all the information that a prospective client or a photographer, stylist, or e even a future agent might need to know about a model. So number one, what you actually look like, pictures of you, and um, your physical stats. That means your measurements um, and your general proportions. Number two, how do you choose the pictures that go on it or how do you take them? So the first thing is I would go through whatever photos you already have of yourself. If you ever have professional or at least good quality pictures, HD pictures taken of you, go through those and see which ones show you in a natural state in a good life. This is your first impression to many people, so it's important to keep it strong and it's important to also keep it honest. I'll start with ones of your face, that's a headshot, maybe a profile, maybe one serious, one smiling. Uh, and then move on to your body. These, uh, depending on the kind of modeling you want to do, you can have just in fitted plain clothing or in bikini or in underwear. Just as well, the headshots, you can have serious ones, very plain black and white, or you can have smiling, happy girl, next boy, girl or boy next door ones. This all, again, depends on the kind of modeling that you're interested in doing. Side note, if you want me to do a video about different types of modeling that you can get into, please comment and I will get on that video for you. And so there should be a headshot, a body shot, perhaps a profile or a smiling one, and maybe one or two styled shots. So if you find that you don't have those, I would organize a TFP shoot as soon as you can. TFP, what used to stand for time for prints, is more like time for photos today because like hardly anybody prints all their photos. So what happens is a model and a photographer or a stylist or designer or brand or makeup artist decides that they're going to come together, organize a shoot or shoots, and nobody's going to pay the other. They both get the pictures for their respective portfolios. So best place for me has, has been social media almost exclusively. If I see somebody's work on Instagram or um, on, on websites like modelmayhem.com, modelmanagement.com. Then I'll reach out to them, see if they first of all are interested in doing a, a trade because some people, it's just not worth it for them, it's their livelihood and they need to only take on pay and work. But other people are coming up. You can also reach out to photography students. Um, and I'm on a couple of Facebook groups specifically for Cape Town photographers, models, stylists, etc. to all communicate with each other and say, hey, I'm trying to do a shoot in this style or I want to update my portfolio. Is anybody interested in planning something together? Bloop. Okay, so while I was filming this last time, my battery died. So we're doing this the next day. I have 10 more minutes of sunlight. Let's go. So point number three is the layout, generally how to lay it out. So because you're designing it yourself, you get to decide how it looks. But it still pays to look at the industry standards, which is like I said, A5 slash 8.5 by 5.5 inches and it can be either portrait or landscape depending on the pictures that you've chosen. So then it is double sided and the first side will be the main side, it'll be your strongest picture because it is just one picture and usually that'll just have your name on it. And then on the flip side that's what will have your remaining three or four pictures, maybe even five. And then your stats, like I've talked about your measurements and everything, which will be for women, for men and women, height. Um, for either of them, bust, waist and hips, for gentlemen, 
chest, waist, and hips, and then your shoe size, and maybe your clothing size as well, and your natural hair and eye color. As far as what units, I put inches in a lot of mine, I can't remember why, um, because I suppose that's more of an American thing, but I would just say put both, both inches and centimeters, but again, it just depends where you plan on working. Um, just the same with the clothing and shoe sizes, use whatever is used in your area or country. Step number four, what are some of the programs that you can use to make it? Personally, I use Adobe InDesign. I love Adobe products. That's what I have used to even do some presentations for university. You know, like once you get, a, get, get your fingers on one of them, then it's pretty easy to use the rest of them. Things like keyboard shortcuts and everything, so I use InDesigns. You can also use Canva, which is a website. You do everything on the website itself. I don't know what to call that, an online app. Um, so that I haven't tried, but that is something you can do. Also, Picasa is a free downloadable photo editing software, and there is a collage feature on that. So you can you know, set your pictures out however you want, and then um, put your text, add your text on top of that or beside it or wherever. So yeah, Canva and Picasa are both free for the most part, but Adobe software is not free downloadable software. However, you can download any one of the Adobe um, programs for a free trial. I believe it's 28 days. So if you want a free trial of InDesign or any of the Adobe um, programs, then there is a link below. And finally, number five, now that you have your Z card, it's up and ready to go, what is it that you even do with it? First thing is, I would print a few. It's not quite as necessary um, as it might have been before, especially if you are working freelance and not being sent to castings, but I would just take one around, maybe print 10. On high quality paper, of course, you know, like spend the money that you need to spend if this is important to you, um, just to hand out, just in case you meet people in life um, and as you go around that you might want to keep in contact with. You know, as I said before, it gives off a professional first impression and it makes you easily contactable, like your contacts are easier to find. Other than that, you're applying to a job that you might have heard about and you're emailing somebody, it's really quick and easy to just put that and it's one or two files. It's your double-sided, so it's your good pictures and your measurements all in one and you don't have to keep like typing things like that out when you are reaching out to somebody for a job or when somebody has reached out to you asking about your stats and your previous work. Aside from that, um, I think the most important thing is what I found is to have an online destination or an online portfolio to send people to because often somebody will ask me for a link to my work because your Z card is your first impression but your portfolio is where you really flex your muscles and like show what everything that you have done. And so for some people that's Instagram and that's cool. I personally have a page on my website as my portfolio but that is because I have a blog so if it's not worth it for you um, then I would go with Instagram. You can of course also use websites like Model Mayhem and modelmanagement.com and send people to there. So cons consistently update your portfolio whenever you get new good work, um, but still remember quality over quantity. And yeah, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below if there's anything that you would do or have done differently as far as making your own Z card. Do you feel like it's worth it for you or not? Remember to like and subscribe to my channel for more model diaries, model hacks, and also some travel if you're into that. And click on the link in the description. I'll also put it as a pinned comment and you can get your free trial to InDesign or any other Adobe products. That's it for now. Thank you again for watching and stay golden. Bye! It is so cold today, so I decided to just come and sit in this little cocoon-like structure with the little, little bit of sunshine that we have. Oh, so fucking noisy, these seagulls.